thought I'd do a quick video on solar charging. Had a few questions on this over the years and I wanted to share some of my experiences. So it's going to be more of a general video rather than extensive testing, though I'll do a bit later on. Just to let you know how I've been getting on and some of the drawbacks. The panel that I've been using is a Suoki. Faded quite a bit, but it's still working okay. I have added some fishing line to this and I'll explain that a little bit later on. You'll see it through the hole at the top. This particular panel is the third panel that I've had. I had a smaller one a couple of years before this and ended up going with this one for my main usage. It does have the dual USB ports. You've got that indicator light as well. So when it's charging or getting a charge, that lights up. Now, as far as specs go, they're rating it as 25 watts and the two amps for each of the USB ports. I've got to be honest with you, you're not going to get that sort of power out of this, but I'll come on to that a bit later on. It is portable though, you can fold it up into quite a small package, so it would certainly fit into a backpack. There are always compromises with these panels, you can get larger ones and smaller ones. I went for this one because it's a little bit bigger than the dual panel that I had. As it's been used so much, there is some warping on some of the panels, it doesn't seem to have caused a problem. Now, I do use sometimes the USB testers, I use these for other devices as well, but I don't always use it, you can generally get a pretty good idea of what's happening. Your real world charging speeds are definitely going to vary quite a bit. It's quite a bright day, but the sun is obscured with a lot of cloud, so heavy cloud cover. I'm getting around about the 800 milliamps out of this panel. But once we go into the shaded area, that drops down to just over the 600. You're going to find with solar charging, it varies tremendously on the sun. And if it's a dark day, bright day now, and the testing on this, I was getting quite good speeds of around 1.3 amps. Best I've ever had out of this panel is 1.8 amps. That's the absolute maximum I've ever managed to get out of it. So there's a lot of variation in the charging rate on these panels. You can see it dropping right the way down once it's gone into cloud cover. Heavy cloud cover can really affect the charging speeds. What I tend to use is the smaller one or two slot chargers. The four slot charger on the right, the night core, that really going to need a good day to get that working properly. I use quite a lot of power banks with this solar panel. The reason is you can charge it, walk away and forget about it and come back at the end of the day, particularly the higher capacity ones. It take me two days to fill with that Xiaomi one on a good days with bright light. Also the F2 by Nightcore. I have the larger 21700 cells and you've got the USB ports on that. So you can use that as a power bank as well as a battery charger. I've done reviews on all of these so you're welcome to check those out. Also the X-Style one. PB2, that's quite a useful one to have as a charger or power bank, although it doesn't work very well for as a power bank with a low charge devices such as headphones and MP3 players. Anything I can charge, such as camera batteries, I will charge them on the solar panel. I want to talk about the battery packs that do have the solar panel built into them. This is a premium one, a Wacka Wacka, and apart from the good intentions of giving a free one away when you buy one, and the usefulness of the light, which is obviously going to be useful in developing countries. Generally speaking, you're not going to get particularly good performance off of these. And it's going to take a full day to charge that in really good light. And that's not going to be enough to charge a phone fully because you're going to get two thirds of the power out of that. With all these power banks, you can reduce by over 30 percent, sometimes about 35 percent what you'll get back out of it. So really, there is no substitute for the larger panel area, even a very efficient panel, and it's supposed to be one watt, the Wacka Wacka. At worst, that could take a week to fully charge in very overcast weather. So I would definitely avoid the power banks with the built-in solar charging. They're going to be disappointed, no question. If you're charging your phone, it can get pretty hot with the heat beating down on it, so I tend to put it behind the panel if I can, or in the flap. If you have a longer cable, it's also worthwhile possibly moving it into the shade if you can, just to keep the heat off of it. As far as charging cables, this is easy to overlook, but they do vary significantly in the power that you can get out of them. I've bought quite a few different ones and I'll link to some below, decent ones that I've used, but some of them can be quite poor with the charging rate. The one that I'm showing here, this came with a torch and that can certainly deal with a high charging rate, but a lot of the budget ones can't. And I've been quite disappointed with the cheap ones that I've bought. This is a cable which came in a few months ago. I didn't get an email, any requests for review, so I haven't made a video, but I thought I would talk about it a bit today. And what's interesting about this is that you have two 
type C connectors on the end with adapters so you can convert the type C to a type A which is much more common in other words use it as your main input source and on the output you can convert the type C to a micro USB you just plug it in at the top take it off when you need to or you can convert it to an Apple lightning connector so you have all the major connectors that you're likely to use in a single cable and generally it's been pretty good little cable so if you can find one of these around it avoids the hassle of using multiple cables to charge. As the adapters are clipped onto the cable, if you ever break it, you can also take them off, or if you need to use one, just peel it off and you can just attach it straight onto another Type C cable. Really good idea. The only downside with that cable is it doesn't seem to support quick charge, and that's not really an issue for this particular solar panel. Despite the panel being waterproof, the devices might not be, so what I've done is I've got a mounting system inside and I hang the solar panel on that so in poor weather conditions where I still be able to get possibly some charge I'll hang it on that. This is a GoPro action camera suction cup put onto the double glazing window and I hang the panel down from that and I can still get a fairly decent charge most of the days. Some days I'm not going to get any charge off of this but at least you can try to get a charge in semi cloudy days. The solar charging varies tremendously depending on the light, but I can still most days get a charge off of this inside, even if it's cloudy. The night core charger here, that will just start to reset if I'm below about three or 400 milliamps. So I can easily see if that's charging, even without using any of the USB testers. If you have pets, it's easy to overlook this one, and I did initially. I tend to lay the panel down on the grass, get a nice coverage of the sun on it, good charging speed, and once the panel warms up the cat comes along sits on the panel and falls asleep so there goes your solar charging so if you have pets cats dogs or anything like that try and hang the panel up if you can just listed out some key points which i've noted over time in relation to charging and the panels which i've already covered the main point is they always overstate the wattage you never get the uh, full wattage out of the panel the dual usb ports are a bit of a waste of time to be honest unless you've got a device which is half charged or almost charged it just splits the current from the main one it might work better on the bigger panels but not on the smaller ones and i'd also give the power banks with the solar panel built in a miss i've tried a few you just can't get enough charge off of them to make it worthwhile you get much better result when you're charging it with a full size panel so hopefully that would be of some use to you if you're doing solar charging but if you have any thoughts or experiences with it or anything you'd like to recommend do leave a comment below and thanks very much for watching.